just castles. And what do I have? Again, not much. I have two bishops, but that's about it. Alright. So that probably equalized on the spot. So, knight b6. b3. I just wanted to prevent him from getting putting, playing his knight here at any at some point. Say I moved my bishop here to defend the pawns. I didn't want to have to deal with that. So, just b3. Prevention. Rook to d8. Bishop b3. Knight to c8. Now here, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Because, say he tries to uh, move the knight to expand on the queen side. Well, that's just going to create a weakness on c6. And I am just going to take advantage of that. Well, maybe I shouldn't have played the ne move I, next move I've made, but... I think it's a fine move, perfectly fine move. A4. The idea is that I'm just gonna expand this pawn all the way down, uh, run that pawn all the way down to A6, and then two weaknesses will appear. Or three, rather. Um, or you can just play, if I get the pawn to A6, you have to move the pawn, and then the pawn on c6 is, is in deep trouble to say the least so he played h6 I suppose he was worried about at some point me playing bishop g5 taking taking e5 and somehow this bishop looking into these uh, Look at looking at those pawns, but I really wasn't thinking of that those terms during the game. I was thinking more of a softening this up a little bit, then building pressure and attacking on to c6. So I'm not sure. So rook a c1 castles, rook fd1, I just wanted to make sure I'm solid on these two pawns. I don't want anything bad to happen. Like me to blunder a pawn. That wouldn't be good. Especially in this position. This position is clearly better for white. I mean, look at the space. I control these. I have it. I have four, three pawns on the fourth rank controlling squares. Where's his pawns? I control the center. I mean, I just think this is an overwhelming advantage for white at this point. So rook to d7, rook c2, rook fd8, e5. I think that I, I was go. It, I wanted him to play here. Okay, so what does that do? Well, I just play here. Very simple. And then I play here. Another simple move. And then I play here. And now, we see that this guy on C7 is in deep trouble. I mean, E6 take it. What is he going to do? He's in trouble. So, what does he do? He plays. Well, he doesn't play that. Um, if he plays here, new variation, I just play rook c7. I was thinking knight b6. Rook to c7. Um, and yeah, this is this is great. Wonderful rook on the c the seventh rank. I don't see what he can do. 
Let's see. Alright, so you could play here. I just think I'm better here. There's yeah. Alright, so just bring the rook back. This is a closed center. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I can take as long as I want. So I am just going to bring this bishop all the way over here. E1, B5. Very simple. Or... If he prevents it with, say, a6, this other bishop is another nice piece. It can go d2, a5. And now we're attacking these two rooks. Or this rook. Rather. Yeah. This is clearly, this is clearly better for white. Alright, so he didn't play this blunder, knight d5. Played knight e8. So, what was that idea? I had no clue. Well, so, I didn't, I honestly didn't realize this plan of bringing it to d5. I thought, well, you couldn't do it a move ago, so why can you do it now? Turns out that was bad thinking. Bishop e2, knight c7, a5, a6. So I thought, hey, well, he's going to d5, so why not play here? Well, I soon found out that I was in for a real surprise. Because c5. Now, had I played something at this point more, um, I'm sure I could find a better move than, than, uh, than bishop c4. I mean, I probably should have played something f4. Yeah, that looks like a nice move. So the idea is, if you come here, I just take it, and then I play here, and then if you play here, well, I 